This is my 2019 Tesla Model 3 SR Plus. Rated range, 240 miles when it was new. It now has 70,000 miles on the odometer. Today, we're gonna answer two questions. First, how long does it take to charge from 80% to 100% using a home charger? Number two, everyone's gonna wanna know this, when it reaches 100%, what is the mileage indicated after six years and 70,000 miles? Let's find out together. All right, let's get it plugged in from my Tesla wall connector. Got to get a few of the cables here and we'll get this thing plugged in. A little Lucian, right? Channel name, brand new. All right, there's the Death Star. Plug it in and uh, there we go. Oh, it's on schedule, so I got to turn off schedule. Okay, we've got it up to 80%, so we're going to be doing this test 80% to 100%. So what I need to do here is slide the uh, slider from 80% over to 100%. You may be wondering why is it only at 32 amps and I'm not allowed to actually uh, increase it. That's because this particular model, that's the max. It's not uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the uh, wall connector. Uh, that is capable of 48 amps. I've actually got my uh, Model Y set to 40 amps. So that is the max for this particular car. We'll see if we get max here at the beginning. So let's go ahead and slide this over all the way to 100% uh, one-time charge because I don't want it to keep it there. This is not an LFP battery. We are going to hit start charging and I do have the notification set up on my phone. So that way I will know uh, if it does finish uh, without me checking, but I will be checking periodically and giving you updates. So we're gonna do 80% to 100%. We're gonna see how long that takes, as well as see what this charges up to in terms of miles. So we are currently at 150 miles at 80% state of charge. It has been known to charge up to about 210 211 lately on a full charge but my guess is probably around 206 i don't know i just have that feeling right now uh just so you know 62 degrees i just came home so that's the uh, ambient temperature and uh what else you want to know we got the time there 858 so i'm going to go ahead and hit start charging we're going to do 80 to 100 as well as see what this thing charges up to full in terms of miles because that's what most people want to know i know most people say throw it on percent and forget about it and i kind of do for the most part but a lot of people out there still base it on miles so we're going to go ahead and test that as well here we go starting charging boom starting to charge we are at 858 i just got the notification on my phone and uh, let's see just before i take off here what uh, we're we're getting up to in terms of amps i believe it's going to be full 32 amps here to start and then it kind of steps its way down as we go so uh, we're probably in the midpoint of the 858 am probably 858 30 ish it's probably going to uh, flip over here in a second so yeah we're at uh, 32 amps already uh, getting the full charge from this particular charger and the car setting. I have a feeling this is going to take a couple of hours because 80% to 100% is always the slowest part of the battery. Even on road trips, even at superchargers, you really don't want to get into the 80 to 100% uh, territory when you're um, charging your battery because it just takes a while. There's the estimate right there, 140. I think it's going to be one hour, 40 minutes, I mean. Uh, I think it's gonna be longer than that because that 99% to 100 just takes forever. Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's get the, an update as to where this charge has been. 8.58 was the time. And I think we're around 9.28 now, almost there. So we are taking a look at the current state of charge, 166 miles uh, up from 150 and we are at 89% state of charge. As you can see, it's uh, kind of slow. We are still going at 32 amps though. So that's full uh, speed, almost at 90%. And of course our limit is 100% and we are now officially at 928. So 30 minutes have gone by and that is the state of charge, 89% or 166 miles. And we're still uh, humming along at 32 amps. We are at the one hour mark. So let's check the progress. Remember the original estimate was one hour, 40 minutes. So let's take a look at what we are seeing right now. It does have uh, 55 minutes uh, remaining. We have dropped right here uh, down to 20 amps, 179 miles. Remember we started at 150 at 
and we are currently at 96%. So you can see, you know, the, that last few percent is just going to take forever. And the same can be said at superchargers. That uh, last 20% of the battery is just a, a, a it's brutal. So uh, there we go. We are still set to 100%. And that is your update for the one hour mark. Original was one hour, 40 minutes. I think it's going to take longer than this 50 minutes. That's uh, even for that last 4%. So the next update will be when we're finished. Okay, about six minutes shy of the three hour mark. I got the notification on my phone and charging has completed. We are at 100%. We started at 8.58 a.m. and we are almost at 11.58 a.m., about five or six minutes um, before the three hour mark. So it took three hours to charge from 80% to a full 100% to getting the charge complete notification on my phone. What did it charge to in terms of miles? That is the uh, big question right here. So here we go, 100% is 190 miles. We started at 150, we charged 40 miles and 20% in roughly three hours. So that is the test for the video. My thoughts and this number, and does it surprise me, next. Oh, one last thing. Uh, you really shouldn't keep your car uh, at 100% very long. So I'm going to take it for a drive because I want to burn some of that off and get it uh, down to at least 90%. I, I really don't want the state of charge to be hovering around the 100% mark very long. So if you do this for road trips, make sure you time it or back time it to when you're about to leave. So don't charge to 100% overnight and then say leave on a road trip at noon. That's a little too long to leave it running at 100%. So I had this video completely edited, ready to go, ready to upload to YouTube, and then I got to thinking, hmm, those numbers actually might be a little concerning. Uh, I did a little math. You could see the equation I used down below, and it turns out it's about 21% degradation. Now, it's not actually degradation. Remember, that's just what it charged to. So I think I will be keeping an eye on it since I have about 30,000 miles left on my warranty. And I will be doing the battery test that's found within service mode in a future video. So with those two things in mind, uh, let's get back to my other thoughts on why I still don't really care or maybe I should or I don't know. Let's get back to the regular video. All right, rolling out of the driveway, want to burn off some of that 100% uh, battery state of charge. Taking one for the team, so to speak. Just want to make sure uh, I don't leave my battery sitting too long at 100%. So here we go, gonna burn it off. What are my thoughts on those numbers? Uh, 190 miles. Well, first of all, it's six years old, so it's not exactly a surprise. I thought I would be around the 205 mark. So just so you guys know, battery degradation happens the most in the first year of ownership. You're gonna see the most degradation. Uh, I saw the, th this car is EPA rated at 240 miles when it was brand new. I saw that exactly once. Basically on my first home charge is when I saw that 240 mark, what it charged to at 240. I never saw it again. It slowly declined, 238, 235, 230, and so on. Then it stabilized to about 212 for a few years every time I charge it to 100%. And by the way, I don't charge it to 100% very often. You know, and I'm sure you've heard the same thing that there is the battery calibration and it wants to see the top end of the battery as well as the bottom end of the battery. And it could be a thing, but I have yet to see any proof from Tesla engineers. It's not in the Tesla manual, so who knows? Uh, at any rate, it kind of makes sense that the car does need a BMS calibration, a battery management system to see the top end of the battery. And I haven't charged this car to 100% in over a year. So seeing the 190 mark is a little surprising surprising, but not too considering uh, the fact that I haven't charged this car to 100% in quite a long time. Also, I charge on superchargers a lot. Why? Because I bought the car to use it and supercharging is convenient and I go road tripping a lot and supercharging for me is free. So I don't quite understand the thinking of, oh, I've got to save my car. I don't want battery degradation. I, I, I better not supercharge because it might hurt it. 
Well, there are studies showing that supercharging actually doesn't hurt the car. That may or may not be true. You could look that up on YouTube. There are other channels that have uh, disproven that. So, is 190 a problem for me? Absolutely not. This car still gets me from point A to point B really well. I, I don't have a problem with the 190 number. Plus, you got to factor in that this 2019 supercharging network, that it's been blown up since 2019. They are literally everywhere from when I first got this car. So if that means I need to supercharge maybe one extra time on a road trip or one extra time here or there driving around town, it's really not a big deal. The EPA rating on this car originally was 240 miles, but let's be honest, you're never going to see that real world either. Uh, just because it charges to 240 doesn't mean you're going to get 240. Uh, just because it charges to 190 doesn't mean I'm going to get to 190. And what I mean by that is there are too many factors at play. My uh, environment is going to be different than your environment here in Los Angeles. My driving style, how heavy I am on the pedal, uh, temperature differences is going to be way different for my car than it is to your car. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to even get the 190 that it charges to or the 200 that you may be getting. So keep that in mind. Obviously, summer and winter are completely different. So there's a lot of factors involved here. And just because you get one number charging does not necessarily mean that's the number you're going to get. So don't freak out. By the way, something to note, you rarely, rarely need to charge to 100%, even if you're heading out on a road trip, because all you need is enough to get to that first supercharger that you plan to stop at. And you really don't want to stop at a supercharger at a high state of charge. Even 40%, you're going to have slower speeds. So use that 100% charging sparingly. Now, obviously, if you can't get to your first destination and you absolutely need that extra 20%, then go for it. Hey, thanks so much for watching another video on the channel. If you find value in this, there were tons of tips in this one. Go ahead and hit that like button and then go that extra step and hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much. It means the world to the channel and takes just seconds out of your day. And I'll see you next time.